in the back of the book segment tonight. On the very last day of 2001's Daytona 500, Dale Earnhardt hit the wall at 200 miles per hour while trying to protect the leads of his son Dale Jr. and his friend Michael Waltrip. Waltrip went on to win the race, but there would be no celebration as news spread about the crash that took Earnhardt's life. Now for the first time, Michael talks about that tragic incident in his new book, In the Blink of an Eye. I talked with him exclusively yesterday. We're coming up now to the 10th anniversary of the Daytona 500, that infamous race where you saw one of your great victories in your life and also one of the greatest moments of sadness. Tell us about it. I just don't think human beings are designed to uh, have that big of a swing of emotion. I mean, I'm standing in victory lane literally seconds uh, after Dale Earnhardt died. Uh, Dale Earnhardt was not only my car owner that day, my first victory in 463 tries, but he was my dear friend too. And uh, Dale Jr., uh, Dale's son, and, and Dale and I all raced to the checkered, were racing toward the checkered, which, which would have been the greatest race in NASCAR history. I'm convinced of it had we have made it that last quarter of a mile. But instead, it became the worst race in NASCAR history when Dale crashed and died down in turn four. And uh, I stood in victory lane, uh, oblivious to what had happened to Dale for a while. And uh, looking back, it's just a very painful experience that uh, I think all race fans went through on that day, and especially those of us that were involved real closely to the situation. Now, you're the only one, Michael, from the original team who's really spoken out to the extent that you have in your new book. Why did it take 10 years? As we were approaching the 10th anniversary of that day, I, uh, me and some buddies just decided it was time to talk and uh, try to lift some of that burden off my heart. And, and uh, for the first time, I watched a tape of the race just six months ago or so as I prepared to write the, write the book. And uh, it helped me. It helped me process what happened. And as we're going back to Daytona for the 10th anniversary, certainly I think it's important for me to be ready to answer a lot of questions. And, and the book, In the Blink of an Eye, that, that we wrote is a good way for me to start that. Now, Michael, how did it change you? I mean, he was your uh, mentor, he was your car owner, he was your friend, and he was trying to help you in his last moments of his life. He was trying to block out the other drivers. I'll never forget watching that race on television. It was one of the most incredible moments in American uh, race car history, American sports history. He was trying to help you in those last moments, you and Dale Jr. Well, when you think of Dale Earnhardt, you think of determination, you think of grit, just a, a blue collar working class guy that got out there and fought for the checkered flag and fought hard for it. And uh, I got so much out of him. He inspired me. Can you imagine? I had raced 462 times and never won. And then my first race driving for Dale, I pull into Victory Lane. You know, I couldn't wait for Dale to come give me a big hug in Victory Lane. And I was going to say, how are we going to go win the next one, Dale? because you're the reason why I'm here today. Michael Walcott wins! And Michael, uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, which former president was the closest to NASCAR, do you think, in his heart, who, who you've met? And you've met a lot of them. Well, uh, my favorite memory of a president was in 1984. I was in the grandstands at Daytona. And uh, maybe I was, I was 20 years old. So um, just sort of down in Daytona having a good time for the 500 or for the 400 in July. And Air Force One lands on the back straightaway. It was President Reagan. He came to the racetrack, went up into the radio booth and called some of the race on the radio and then had a big barbecue after the race for, uh, for the racers. And so uh, that always put a, uh, left an impression on me. I was a big Ronald Reagan fan all through middle school uh, and, and voted for him in 1981 and certainly loved Ronald Reagan. And, and the fact that he took time out to come be a part of that event that day, it legitimized a whole lot of, about what we were doing in NASCAR to, to people all across our country. The growth since the 80s has been unprecedented in our sport. And I think it's because of the attention uh, back then that President Reagan gave us. So I know his 100th uh, birthday's coming up pretty soon and he was a true true uh, man that I, I admired and and a great leader of our country and uh, he was in Daytona for for something that I loved NASCAR and that gave us something in common and Michael who gets booed the most which driver and why Kyle Busch because he's mean <laughs> but I like him I mean not probably Kyle Busch because he's so competitive and so intense and uh, he uh, he tells you what he thinks and and people yeah. people uh, sort of don't like that. I had a brother named Daryl back in the 70s who everybody booed him as well because he won a lot. That's sort of what Kyle's up against. Just a lot of, lot of wins and people want to see the, the, the guy that wins beat. 
All right, Michael Waltrip, it's great to talk to you, and uh, great book. We're really glad uh, you were able to share your memories of Dale Sr. with us. Thank you, Laura. I'm really proud of the book, and I appreciate the time tonight. What a great guy.